the little ones Helpless and half abandoned They've got a right to choose life They don't want to lose I've got to speak up, won't you? Hello and welcome to the Coalition Life uh, webcast this spring 2023. My name is Brian Westbrook. I'm the executive director and host for this webcast this afternoon. Uh, and I'm so blessed and honored to be able to bring to you a lot of uh, information and news about what's happening in the Midwest with regards to abortion. Uh, the the news is coming out of both Illinois and Missouri and what you all have been doing here uh, to continue to advance to save lives. Today, we're going to be covering uh, quite a few things, but like we always do here at Coalition Life, let's start with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day and for the gift of our lives. And we ask you to be with us during this time, strengthen us, guide us, and help us to uh, serve you in absolutely everything that we do. Uh, you are the fountain of all life, and so we ask you to uh, be with the technology that it might uh, work uh, seamlessly, uh, and also uh, be with all of those who are watching and listening uh, to this broadcast, whether it be now or later on after the fact. And finally, be with our uh, clients who we serve every single day, that they would ultimately choose life. Amen. Well, today we're going to spend a lot of time uh, talking about a lot of really important issues, uh, but we're going to you know, really constrain this uh, to a very short amount of uh, you know, content uh, in, in a very short amount of time, but a lot of content. So uh, let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so we're going to share some updates for Coalition Life. What have we been doing over the last 12 months, the last six months, uh, and then, of course, over the last 11 years? Uh, here at Coalition Life. We're going to learn from a lot of really key pro-life leaders, uh, both here in Missouri and also in Illinois. Uh, we're going to hear from some women who we've been able to serve and they've been able to choose life for their babies. Uh, we're actually going to talk about uh, several big announcements that uh, we're going to be sharing with you later on in the broadcast. So uh, stick around for uh, the big announcements we're going to talk about uh, later on. Uh, but uh, before we do that, uh, the second thing we always do here at Coalition Life uh, is we always start with a fundamental. After we pray, uh, we're always going to start with a fundamental. So this week's uh, fundamental uh, is, uh, so we have 30 of them on our fancy little card, is uh, to be relentless about improvement. Regularly evaluate the way you or we work to find ways to improve. Don't be satisfied with the status quo because we've always done it that way is not a reason. Guard against complacency. Find ways to get things done better, faster, and more efficiently. So uh, one of the individuals I know uh, embodies many of our fundamentals uh, is my good friend, Rachel Hiley, who's our chief of staff. Uh, so let's see if we can welcome Rachel Hiley uh, to the broadcast today. So welcome, Rachel. Hi, Brian. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so Rachel, she's our, our chief of staff here at Coalition Life. So uh, she keeps uh, the work going and helps us to continue to save lives. And uh, today we wanted to talk about some of the ministry results we had through Coalition Life. Uh, and so, uh, Rachel, I think we've got a lot that we want to share about specifically sidewalk counseling. So, uh, Rachel, could you share a few things about the three different cities we're in right now? Absolutely. Like you said, we're talking about the results that we have in the work that we do, but none of it is more important than what we do on the sidewalk. Our sidewalk counseling is at the heart of what we do here at Coalition Life, reaching out to those women, being the last line of defense is really who we are and what we're all about. So, um, of course, this is going to be the first information that we want to share with you guys today. And uh, it's been a little bit since we've given you some official updates. So much has changed. Uh, so much movement is happening in the pro-life movement. Within the last year, we've seen the Dobbs decision that's overturned Roe versus Wade. Missouri has become an abortion-free state, uh, which means 
we have no longer have a need for sidewalk counselors in Missouri, praise be to God, but uh, the need across the river in Illinois has greatly increased. And so since our last spring webcast a year ago, a lot has changed. We are still sidewalk counseling in Fairview Heights, Illinois, which of course is right across the river from St. Louis. It's here still in the St. Louis metro area. We've been there since uh, October of 2019, when that facility opened, we were there on day one. We've continued to be there, continued to bring hope and life to all of the women that we encounter outside of that facility. In 2021, late in the year, around November, we expanded to Flossmore, which is a southern Chicago suburb, and our team has been working diligently up in the Chicago region as well. Of course, there are many, many abortion facilities in that small area, but we are at that one down in, in Southern Chicago in, in the township of Flossmoor. And then most recently, and this some of you may not even know yet, we are sidewalk counseling in a brand new city, Carbondale, Illinois, which is the Southern, one of the southernmost cities in Carbondale. And this is really where the abortion industry has chosen to lock their sights and pour a bunch of time and effort and money into making Southern Illinois an abortion destination for people in the pro-life surrounding states. And so since September of 2022, so just over six months now, we've been down in Carbondale, sidewalk counseling at both abortion facilities that have opened there in the last few months. So uh, the Choices, abortion facility down there was the first to open it opened brian when was that september october of 2020 yes. we started sidewalk yep. counseling there on day one and then uh, alamo alamo is the second abortion facility down in carbondale that opened recently and our team has been there uh standing in as a last line of defense as well so we are really busy we've got sidewalk counselors all over the state of illinois working to defend life well, uh, Rachel, we're excited to be down in Carbondale, uh, but also it's kind of a bittersweet, right? So we've got uh, a lot of things happening there. We've gotten to meet a lot of new people down there in Carbondale. Uh, and we also know that there is a Planned Parenthood currently under construction, a 14,000 square foot facility there. Uh, and uh, we know that they want even more abortions in Carbondale. Uh, so we'll be talking a little bit more about Carbondale. Uh, here during the broadcast, uh, but I wanted to share a few statistics. So maybe we can put a few of these statistics up on the screen. We're really excited about the growth of our sidewalk counseling ministry. Uh, so it's been a little bit over 11 years of doing sidewalk counseling, first here in St. Louis, and then eventually over in Illinois. So we've seen 3,643 turnarounds out in front of these abortion facilities. So just one person reaching out to these women who are in crisis who are driving in for their abortion or their other pregnancy related services so that they're getting a, a pregnancy test and really dabbling back and forth am i going to get an abortion we can turn them around right there in front of those facilities uh, so uh, we're now operating at four abortion facilities two down in carbonale one here in uh, Fairview Heights across the river, and then also up in Chicago area in a suburb called Flossmoor. But I want to point out, uh, there's so far this year, we've seen 209 turnarounds so far this year. We're not even halfway through the year. Uh, in years past, we would average about 300 or even lower uh, number of turnarounds each year. So we are far exceeding the number of women that we've been able to help in any other year prior. So 209 turnarounds uh, at these uh, local abortion facilities is a huge victory for us here at Coalition Life. And of course, we're going to follow up a lot of that through our pregnancy center, uh, Women's Care Connect. So uh, we did also want to take a look at what is this Southern Illinois district? So let's, uh, I think we have a slide that talks about uh, specifically the, the map of uh yep there it is so uh what's very interesting about southern illinois uh and even this uh show called gray's anatomy uh, i've never watched it but apparently they they talk about how southern illinois is the hotbed of abortion and so uh, there are many states surrounding southern illinois that have no abortions in them and so we are going to wear the abortion industry is going, which is Carbondale, Illinois. Uh, so we have so much to be thankful for. Uh, but as we think of Carbondale, also Fairview Heights, we know that 82% of all clients we see in Carbondale aren't even from Illinois. 
Uh, there are very few Illinois license plates that drive into these abortion facilities. And over in Fairview Heights, Illinois, uh, you know, sheer 60 percent of all the clients going to Fairview Heights uh, are not from Illinois. And 36 percent of those come from the state of Missouri. So we know that many of these women and we haven't really seen this before in our ministry. This is actually fairly new for us. Uh, but we've had a huge success in turn around, turning around clients who are coming from two, four, or even six hour drives away, coming to Carbondale or Fairview Heights to get their abortions. And they meet our team there and we're able to turn them around. So, uh, Rachel, I know we have a lot of news to share about Women's Care Connect, our pregnancy center. And so could you share us what's happening there? Of course. So Women's Care Connect, as you mentioned, that is our pregnancy center where we operate out of Missouri, where all of these women that we turn around, we follow up with. Additionally, we have women that come to our pregnancy center before ever making it to an abortion facility. This is just one of the other ways that we serve as that last line of defense. As women are actively searching for a place to find an abortion, uh, we are advertising online, hoping to direct them into our uh, facility instead so that they can get life affirming care, um, helpful information and the facts, really, so that if they're looking at their pregnancy and the choices that are before them, that they have the facts in hand and they can make an, a decision that's going to get them to a point of being happy, whole and healthy. And we all know abortion is not going to be that decision. And uh, since 2015, when we started this branch of our ministry, we have served nearly 4000 women. We're up to 3,942 women that we have served through this pregnancy center. And this is just the women. Of course, we've served their children and their families as well, but this is just how many pregnant uh, women that we have served. And since 2020, mid 2020, when we added our ultrasound program, we have already performed 315 ultrasounds, giving those women the first glimpses of their child and helping them to understand that the thing growing inside of them is a human being and not just a lump of tissue or cells as the abortion industry would have them believe. In the last year alone, we have served 925 clients. So with that rate, we are we are really growing in that part of our ministry and we are serving these women still here in Missouri, because as you mentioned, they're still looking for abortions. Just because we have outlawed abortion in Missouri doesn't mean that our women aren't facing unplanned crisis pregnancies. A lot of them are still going across the river to Illinois where they're meeting our sidewalk counselors in Fairview Heights. Uh, but we still need to be here, be present and active in Missouri so that they have a place to go and their child has somebody looking out for them in the line of defense. Well, Rachel, I, I think we're going to talk a little bit more with you uh, later in the broadcast, but uh, I wanted to thank you for sharing many of those results and uh, running uh, the ministry uh, when, uh, when I'm out or, or uh, having a speaking engagement or, or something like that. Uh, you're continuing to keep the ministry running so that we can save lives uh, right here on the ground. So uh, thank you for all of that. And thank you for sharing uh, this important information with us. Of course. So uh, we wanted to turn to our director of client services uh, who shared with us what is Women's Care Connect? Let's go a little bit deeper into what is the Pregnancy Center and how important it is. Well, I'm so excited uh, that we have a chance to sit down with Stephanie Doherty, our director here at Women's Care Connect, our pregnancy center. Uh, and Stephanie, I know that you have hundreds of clients you're working with and your team is uh, really round the clock working with these clients to help them to save their children's lives. Uh, so thanks for the few minutes you've been able to you know, squeeze in here for us. Uh, so tell us who is Women's Care Connect? What do you guys do? Well, like a lot of pregnancy resource centers, we offer pregnancy tests, ultrasounds, and connections to resources, as well as some baby supplies. But what really sets us apart is that we're seeking out the abortion-determined women, the women who are looking to get abortions, and we want to work with them. Uh, one of our main services that we offer here is uh, called coaching. And through coaching, we sit down with the women and we talk to them about their lives, their circumstances, what they're thinking and feeling about their pregnancy. And we hope to get them to a point of feeling empowered to choose life for their baby. Well, I know that uh, the, the coaching model is really difficult, mm -hmm. uh, is my understanding. <laughs> uh, as, as we work through this training we do for our team, uh, the coaching model 
is more about uh, them drawing out of themselves mm -hmm. that says, you know what, abortion, I never really wanted an abortion and helping them understand there's lots of resources out uh, mm -hmm. there for them uh, versus a convincing model. Yes. Right. So uh, I, I know you're working with hundreds of clients. And so you've got to have some stories. So I know our, our, um, our audience is always wondering what's happening behind the scenes with Women's Care Connects. Uh, do you have any that you could share with us today? I do. We recently worked with a client named Angela and Angela uh, was raped by a family friend of hers. And she actually had two abortion appointments scheduled. The first one she went to but left because she was feeling very undecided and conflicted. The second appointment, she, prior before going to it, she prayed to God that if he didn't want her to go through with the abortion, that he would send her a sign. So driving up to Planned Parenthood, she encountered our sidewalk counselors and received a card for Women's Care Connect. Uh, she took that as her sign and turned around and gave Women's Care Connect a call and came in for an appointment. So, wow. Wow. So, I mean, this is what we what we do every single day. Yes. Right. Uh, so we're out on the sidewalks. We're we're passing on information. We're we're talking to them directly in front of these abortion facilities. And sometimes we don't know what happens. Mm -hmm. Right. But in this case, we do. Yes. Right. So. So tell us more. What, what happened after that? So Angela came into our offices and she met with a couple of our client care specialists. She shared her story. Uh, which she had not shared with anybody prior to that point. She was carrying that weight alone. Um, Angela was struggling with having never wanted to be a mother in the first place, but knowing what God was telling her. And she came in and uh, several times throughout her pregnancy, we also connected her to counseling resources, baby supplies, and were an ongoing source of support for her in a time when she was feeling very alone. And by the time her baby came, which she uh, decided to name Hope, um, uh, which had a very special meaning to her given all that she had been through. Uh, by the time she gave birth to Hope, she uh, was feeling excited about being Hope's mother. Thank you so much for sharing that story. And what I really see that you guys are doing is it's a combination between the ultrasound and also uh, the coaching model. And I'm really impressed with the coaching model. That you're really drawing it out of them that uh, no one wants an abortion mm -hmm. and, and she didn't want an abortion. And we're so glad that we, she was able to choose life uh, for her children. So uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, how many clients are you serving on a regular basis uh, and where they're coming from? Well, in the last year, we served almost a thousand women. Uh, and they're coming from a variety of different places. Uh, we get a lot turned around from the sidewalk with our amazing sidewalk counselors, but we also get a lot of women uh, through online methods, through referrals, through phone calls, um, women basically seeking out abortion, and we hope that our name pops up. Well, Stephanie, I know that you've had a lot of difficult circumstances with a lot of these different clients. In fact, I think some of them have already taken the first abortion pill. We know that uh, over 50 percent of all abortions are now chemical abortions. So uh, has this ever happened uh, through Women's Care Connect? Yes. Uh, actually, one time we were working with a client named Jaden. She had gone to Planned Parenthood for an abortion and was actually turned around by our sidewalk counselors and she went over to Mosaic and from there decided to choose life and was in contact with our client care specialists. However, uh, her mom later discovered that she was pregnant and forced her to return to Planned Parenthood uh, for the abortion. And when she was there, uh, she was so scared that she wasn't responding to anything that any of the abortionists were asking her and her mom was answering all the questions for her and telling them that yes, she was going to take the abortion pills uh, without running any sort of ultrasound to see how far along she was. They gave her the pills and forced her to take the first one there. During, wow. mm -hmm. during this time, she was in contact with our client care specialists and uh, told them what was going on and um, upon returning home, 
she faked uh, taking the second pill. She hid it under her tongue because at that time, our client care specialists were reaching out to a network of doctors trying to find somewhere that we could get the abortion pill reversal protocol going. Um, what ended up happening is we ended up calling a car for her and sending her over to a doctor where a couple of our client care specialists joined her as support. Luckily, it was successful, and uh, it turns out that she was around 20 weeks at the time wow. that she was prescribed the abortion pills. Wow, that's uh, a lot further than any abortionist should be given the abortion pill, right? Yes. FDA approval is uh, no later than 10 weeks. It actually says that they recommend not prescribing it at all after 10 weeks. And uh, most abortion facilities will say that they limit it to 11 or 12 weeks. But as we see in this case, that just wasn't true. Wow. Wow. So uh, so what was the result uh, of all of this work that, that had to happen to get her to a doctor uh, and schedule those appointments mm -hmm. and, and you know, call a car? What was the result of all of this? Well, after a lot of fancy footwork and a um, lot of effort to make sure that she was able to get in, uh, she did end up having her baby, a little boy named Trey, and her mother ended up um, coming around and being excited to be a grandmother. That's incredible news, mm -hmm. incredible news. So uh, it's, it's stories like this that really inspire me to continue to fight the good fight. And uh, and of course, we thank our, our, our donors, our supporters, our volunteers for making that uh, possible mm -hmm. um, through the work that they're doing both on the sidewalk uh, and also uh, through the pregnancy center. So I think it's uh, it's the whole story. Mm -hmm. It's all of it uh, mm -hmm. that works together to be able to save these babies, uh, along with a network of different doctors as well. So uh, Stephanie, uh, I know you're you're very busy. Uh, so thanks for spending some time with us today. Yeah, of course. Well, and thank you again to Stephanie for uh, spending a little bit of time to uh, record that short video, but. Uh, you know, we can tell all kinds of stories, but what we really want to hear from is the clients themselves. So uh, let's uh, take a listen. Hi there. My name is Amaya. I've been a part of the Women's Care Connect community since literally I don't know, very early on in my pregnancy. They were there when I got my first ultrasound. That was the first time I uh, found out I was having twins. I did not know I was <laughs> pregnant with twins, and they got me in. They were the earliest people available to give me an ultrasound, which really provided me just some comfort about it. Um, at the time, I was going through just something kind of traumatic, and I really needed an ear. Um, they also provide services for, you know, counseling. Like, if you need somebody to talk to through the pregnancy, they provide a lot of options and resources in case you don't know where to start. I know they provided me with doctors and places that I can go for assistance, whether that's financial assistance, care for my babies, or just the counseling. It was really what I needed, and I honestly genuinely do not know what I would have done had I not, like, contacted them. They were the kindest people. They they really genuinely care about the women that come through the clinic, and they don't judge you. You know, they, they give you room to speak and listen and explore all your options and talk all things out. And I really think that that's something that's missing with a lot of women these days who go through this process. They feel like they don't have anyone to talk to or a support system. And so I would recommend Women's Care Connect to any woman. <laughs> um, and I, I just pray that you guys find them. They're awesome, and I hope that they work for you. So thank you so much, Women's Care Connect, and to the supporters who make this work possible. Hi, my name is Erica. My daughter who was born last November is Blake. Blake and I couldn't have gotten to this point without the help of Women's Care Connect. I received a pregnancy test and ultrasound. I was provided resources where I could get help paying my bills, counseling over text and in person, a newborn photography session, Christmas presents, and I've been continuously receiving necessities such as diapers and wipes for my child. My favorite part about Women's Care Connect is the emotional support and counseling. I'm so grateful for all the support provided throughout my pregnancy and during the birth of my child. 
The kindness and guidance of these women have helped me feel more confident and calm during a very intense and emotional time. We can't thank Women's Care Connect enough for all the ways they went above and beyond to help me and my family. Their care made a world of difference, and we're so lucky to have them in our lives. I would refer anyone I could to Women's Care Connect. Thank you to Women's Care Connect and the supporters who make this work possible. Well, again, we want to thank you as our supporters and donors and volunteers for making our pregnancy center uh, happen. Uh, but it's also the Sidewalk Counseling and Pregnancy Center all happening together along with our online advertising to make it possible. Uh, so we, as you know, we're, we're uh, never satisfied uh, because we know that there are still roughly 800,000 abortions that are happening nationwide. And so we need to continue to go out and expand and grow uh, our ministry. And so, Rachel, I think you've got a, a couple of things that you wanted to to share with us. Uh, first is going to be about STI testing. So tell us, why does STI testing matter? Uh, and uh, why would we want to continue to grow and add STI testing to our ministry? Yeah, thanks, Brian. Uh, a lot of people hear that and think, well, what does STI testing have to do with abortion? How does this help the pro-life movement? And why would any PRC really care about providing STI testing? But the fact is, is that the same risky behavior that leads to unplanned pregnancies also has a really high likelihood of resulting in sexually transmitted infections. And women who do contract these infections and have an untreated infection and then go through with an abortion are at a significantly higher risk of complications like pelvic inflammatory disease. And uh, quite frankly, the abortion industry doesn't care. They don't require testing for these diseases before providing an abortion procedure to them, especially in Illinois. So, so many of our women that we're encountering over there in Illinois are going into these abortion facilities expecting to get a same day abortion with no testing, no uh, verifying how far along they are in their pregnancy, no checking to see if they have any diseases that are going to result in further infection and danger to their health. And this is just one of another opportunities that we can reach them there on the sidewalk, that our sidewalk counselors can help them understand that there's a reason for them to take a minute and pause and maybe go somewhere else for some other services before they even decide to think about making a decision regarding their pregnancy, that they have other questions that they need to answer first. And this is kind of what we saw with our ultrasounds as well, right? They don't require right. those in, in Illinois either. So they don't have to verify that their pregnancy is viable before going and terminating it. Um, and they don't have to confirm that they are uh, free of STIs either. And so on the sidewalk, that gives us one other opportunity to provide a needed health care service for these women, but also direct them over to a life affirming pregnancy resource center that's going to give them those health answers that they need, but also give them honest, factual, life affirming options coaching so that they have that moment to slow down think about their situation, evaluate their options. And like I said before, make that choice that's gonna get them happy, whole and healthy, which of course is not abortion. Right, and so STI testing is yet another tool in our toolbox we can provide right here in-house directly for our clients. Uh, and it also allows us to have one more time to talk with them. Uh, if they're coming in for an STI test, they're also we're also talking about their pregnancy at exactly the same time. So yeah. as we provide a more comprehensive uh, package of services, we then get to talk to them even more often about their pregnancy. Uh, so that's very exciting news and that's coming very soon. Uh, and I think uh, we have one more thing to share. Uh, and we, we talked about it just a little bit. If you re recall, Stephanie's story uh, was about this thing called abortion pill reversal. And so uh, we are also announcing this afternoon that our pregnancy center will we will be bringing something called abortion pill reversal. And you think, wait a second, I, you know, a few of us in the pro life movement have heard about this thing, but a lot of people have not heard about what abortion pill reversal actually is. And uh, it's very very exciting. So we hear about right now in the Supreme Court, uh, they are debating the chemical abortion and whether or not it was um, you know, approved by the FDA properly and so on and so forth. Uh, but most importantly for us is that the vast majority of abortions happening right now today are chemical abortions. And what a lot of women don't know is that you can actually reverse these chemical abortions 
if you do it in a timely manner. And so uh, the dosage of that, it depends on where they are in their pregnancy, uh, but it's uh, prescribed uh, through a doctor and then eventually uh, through us as a pregnancy center. We can, uh, with standing orders from our uh, medical director, we can then help them get that progesterone in a very, very short amount of time. Uh, and so we're really excited to be able to provide that. So uh, if if our sidewalk counselors meet a woman on the sidewalk who is considering abortion or just had uh, a chemical abortion, there's actually two pills. So you take the first set and you wait a little bit and then you take the second set. If they haven't taken the second set of uh, abortion pills, they can come to us or very soon they'll be able to come to us and reverse that abortion if they do it within 24 to 48 hours. So yeah. it's a huge tool in our- Yeah, that's, that's right, Brian. That first pill, like you mentioned, that mifepristone that they take there at the facility, that acts by blocking the hormone progesterone, which is what allows a woman to stay pregnant. So that first pill that they take, as soon as they take it, it starts choking and starving out the life from this child. So when we talk about time sensitivity, this is crucial. Like we have to be able to start administering that counteractive progesterone to help sustain that baby's life because that first set of pills, the job there is to end the life of the child before the second set expels the child from the mother's body. So we really have to act fast in any amount of time, even precious you know, minutes and hours that we save by being able to initiate that protocol in-house is huge for uh, the chances of being able to save that baby's life. Right. Now, a lot of the clients we meet over in Illinois actually are coming from Missouri. So they're already coming back this way anyway. So it's a really critical, important tool that we'll have in our toolbox, uh, whether we meet them online through our, our internet advertising or through uh, our sidewalk counseling. So we're really excited about that. And to tell us just a little bit more about that is uh, Dr. Kathleen Birchelman. Well, I'm so excited to uh, welcome Dr. Kathleen Birchelman to our webcast today. Welcome. Good to see you. Thanks so much for having me. Well, uh, one of the things we just announced here on the webcast was uh, that we're going to be adding STD testing along with uh, the abortion pill reversal uh, to our pregnancy center, uh, where women are going to be able to receive this directly inside the pregnancy center. So let's talk about STD testing first and foremost. Uh, as, as a medical doc doctor, uh, we're working with, I think, 150 uh, clinicians around uh, the United States, uh, with my Catholic doctor. Um, thank you very much, first and foremost, for being on the program. Uh, but tell me about STD testing and why that's important. Look, when it comes to healthy moms and healthy babies, we need moms and dads to be in healthy relationships. There's nothing, it's so important for a healthy child to have parents in healthy relationship. And STDs indicate an unhealthy relationship, right? It's not just the health of the body, which obviously those STDs need to be treated medically, but the question is how did that STD happen? And it does represent an unhealthy relationship, right? So anybody that makes somebody else very, sick is not respecting that other person, right? So if you're engaging and if you're giving somebody an STD, you're not respecting that person. So first and foremost, we want women to be tested for STDs, treated for STDs, and we want them to enter into healthy relationships where they're not getting STDs. And the first part of that process is learning that you have an STD. Tell me about this abortion pill reversal. Um, from a medical perspective, what is it, you know, we, we hear this, you know, thrown around here and there, uh, but what, what is the process of actually going through that? Right. So the pharmaceutical abortion is becoming more common and it's important for the everybody to understand what a pharmaceutical abortion really involves. And it's, um, it's really two sets of pills, which are commonly now sent through the mail to the person, to the person that's seeking the abortion. Um, and the first pill um, can, uh, it, after they take that first pill, it, there is a process in which the abortion can be stopped. So there's this incredible thing that happens, which is that so many women, even though they've taken all the steps to get abortion pills, um, they get them, you know, they make their appointments. They usually have to do a telehealth visit. Um, and then the pills come in the mail. And these are women generally in very difficult personal circumstances. Um, and they take that first pill and there's this incredible thing that happens, which is that they're overcome with regret. 
And, uh, you know, it's, um, it, it's just a reality that we've seen this. And it, it, it does continue to really surprise me how often that occurs, that it's a real phenomenon. And women need to know all of their options. And one of their options is abortion pill reversal, which is a, a pretty simple medical procedure that the we give um, a, a medication called progesterone, which can stop that process of the chemical abortion. Um, so we, we get the, the medicine on board as soon as possible and then get that woman into obstetrical care. So uh, tell me about the timing of this. I, I know that timing is really important. So uh, why would it be important to have it there on site at a, at a pregnancy center? Well, it's the sooner the medicine is given, the more likely the reversal is to be effective. Um, <clears throat> so it really is an emergency. This is a um, a life threatening um, uh, emergency for the baby, and um, and it and honestly, the it prevents all of the post. Uh, the uh, harm that abortion does to women, right? And we know there's evidence-based data that women who have had abortion um, suffer effects from the abortions, right? And all of that, you know, we believe will probably be prevented if we're able to reverse this abortion. So there's harm prevented to both the mom and the baby through abortion pill reversal. And the sooner, the better. The sooner the medicine gets on board, the more likely it is to be effective. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Birchelman. I before you get off the, the call, uh, tell us about My Catholic Doctor. I know it's a great uh, program that uh, you started many years ago. Uh, and uh, how can people learn about it? Well, it's not many years ago, Brian. Um, we opened in 2019. Um, and uh, we've uh, now are um, more than 170 clinicians offering services in 50 states. So we're go to mycatholicdoctor.com. We're a full service telehealth organization um, with the mission of making pro-life Catholic health care accessible. So um, when you go to our website, you know, whether you need uh, urgent standard urgent care for pink eye or sinus infection, we've got you taken care of, but also full service, everything from um, uh, uh, post-abortion care to um, uh, end of life care or pro-life at end of life to taking care of people with dementia and aged. Um, we um, offer full virtual primary care services and specialty care, dermatology, rheumatology, endocrinology. Um, we're here for you. So um, whatever your need is, um, please come to us. Uh, we can, when you go to our website, you have a choice. You press rapid access urgent care, which means that you'll be seen by the next available clinician that's qualified to see you um, based on your age and your state. And that's usually for, you know, minor um, conditions. Um, or you can read our full list of clinicians and pick your doctor and make an appointment. And that would be more common for somebody looking for primary care, fertility care, natural family planning, or um, any specialty services. Well, again, thank you, Dr. Birchelman, for uh, recording that short uh, clip with us and, and everyone who's been able to help us with this uh, broadcast today. Uh, I did actually want to bring in a, a very good friend of mine, uh, Mary-Kate Zander, uh, who is, we're, we're so excited about the work that uh, you are doing over there in Illinois, uh, the uh, director of uh, Illinois Right to Life. And uh, I heard you have uh, some personal news that you are excited about. So tell us about that. I do. Yeah. So I'm 15 weeks pregnant as of Tuesday. So I guess approaching 16 weeks. Um, so yeah, last time I saw you, I was, you know, trying not to dry heave between conversations, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but things are getting better and obviously grateful to be expecting our first. So it's really exciting. Well, I'm excited for you. I'm glad you had a chance to come down to St. Louis. And uh, anytime you need me up in Chicago or Springfield or anywhere, just just let me know. You let me know. Awesome. Uh, but uh, we're having a lot of fun. Uh, but we're also talking about some very serious issues mm -hmm. here on the broadcast today. Uh, as, as you know, we talked about our pregnancy center and also our sidewalk counseling and how important those are. But I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of politicians right now in Illinois who do not want us to do this work. And they do not want the, the 90 plus pregnancy centers and maternity homes and pro-life groups. They don't want these groups doing the work there in Illinois. So tell us what's happening there on the ground. I know there's a lot you know, of breaking news on this. Yeah, so um, our timing with this webcast is, I don't know if it's good or ill-fated with what happened last night, but so um, we've been fighting since March, since the beginning of the session 
um, a bill that was put forth by specifically two legislators, really one who is a major activist on this issue. She um, is sort of infamous. She actually defeated Peter Breen, who is, um, uh, you know, leads up the Thomas More Society um, and knocked him out of his seat in the Illinois House. And Planned Parenthood chose her by hand and funded her campaign um, and is really the reason that she's there in Springfield. And she has um, really done done a service to that to that honor, I guess. And so she um, she put this bill forward. Basically, uh, it's called the Deceptive Practices of Limited Services Pregnancy Centers Act. And basically what this bill says is it says that um, limited services pregnancy centers, which um, excludes the bill specifically excludes abortion providers. Um, it refers really to pro-life pregnancy resource centers that these uh, centers have been guilty in the past of deceptive or man manipulative practices. And that as of the passage and um, implementation of this law, that the attorney general can now go after those pregnancy resource centers without any formalized complaint from a client or, you know, it, it can really be unsubstantiated in that sense. Right. Um, and they can charge these pregnancy centers up to $50,000. And the reason that it's a concern actually not just for pregnancy centers, but also for organizations like Coalition Life is that, you know, in a lot of the hearings we've been in with them, um, they refer to pregnancy centers, but the behaviors they are describing are the behaviors of sidewalk advocates, that you have sidewalk advocates on the ground in front of pregnancy centers, counseling women, having honest conversations with them. Um, and, you know, as we know, progressive Democrats in the Illinois legislature don't see those as honest conversations. They see them as rather inconvenient truths, I guess, if you will. Right. Um, so, so that's kind of where we're at. So actually, the uh, we've been fighting this bill since March. The bill, unfortunately, passed through the House on third reading yesterday, um, and it had already passed through the Senate. So we are looking at now it's going to be sent to Governor Pritzker's desk. Um, we don't put a lot of faith in the governor, of course, but we do put some faith in the courts. The courts have stood by the pregnancy centers on similar issues in the past. Um, there was a law a couple of years ago that would have required pregnancy centers in the state of Illinois to refer for abortions. And the court said that's compelled speech that will not, we will not hold that up. Um, so we hope to see the same type of outcome in this circumstance. And there have been some other things that Thomas More Society has done some work on the side um, to forward that case. Um, so that's something that they're already preparing for. But as of today, that is where it stands. It did pass and will go to the, the, to the governor's desk. Well, uh, hopefully my friends can bring that slide back up and we can talk about that, uh, mm -hmm. the language inside the bill. And it talks about uh, omitting uh, or concealing, quote, factual data. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so would, the, would a piece of factual data be where, where the nearest abortion provider is? Or what's the phone number of the nearest abortion provider? Or how can I get an abortion? Or where? So uh, they could possibly, through this, compel pro-life groups and pregnancy centers to do exactly what you just talked about, which was compel them to support, promote, and push abortions. Uh, and it also would compel them to share studies and factual data that has been done uh, that maybe the other side doesn't accept. Mm -hmm. And said, uh, well, you know, you might be have a higher risk uh, of with regards to having an abortion versus going full term on pregnancy, depending on certain factors. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's preventing or potentially could prevent uh, pregnancy centers from doing that. Uh, so uh, besides uh, talking with the governor, calling the governor's mm -hmm. office or, or praying for good judges, uh, mm -hmm. what? For, for anyone running a pregnancy center uh, mm -hmm. in Illinois, what are we what are we telling them? Yeah, you know, um, we're telling them a couple of things where, you know, we're telling them all of what you just said. Um, particularly, I would get in touch with Thomas More Society because they'll be able to give you more of the details around the legal piece. Um, but, you know, the other thing that we've been encouraging pregnancy centers to do is to actually, and it might feel a little bit late for this now, but I think the reality is we will never stop in this battle to protect pregnancy centers, right. particularly in Illinois. They've just made it clear that they are interested in going right after them. Um, so we have been encouraging pregnancy centers to actually invite nearby legislators, whether in their district or in the surrounding districts, to come and see 
the presenters for themselves. And we know because we have experience with pregnancy centers and we've, you know, been in them. You, you guys obviously have one that you run that these are incredibly compassionate, clean, very careful medical facilities that are concerned with women's health first and foremost. That is not the picture that's being painted by these activist legislators in Springfield who are only interested in shutting them down. Um, so that's something that we're really encouraging people to do. And then, of course, you know, we are just always encouraging everyone to get to know your legislator face to face, like show up at their district office when they have, you know, coffee or office hours or what have you introduce yourself. Um, you know, we, we don't uh, we, we never encourage anyone to go up to their legislator and say, you know, you're complicit in the deaths of, you know, tens of thousands a year, although. I, I personally are. believe that that's true. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, but we do encourage them to say, I'm in your district and I'm paying attention and I see how you vote. And that's sometimes that's enough to make people a little bit nervous. And legislators deserve to be nervous in Illinois. So, um, yeah, that's those are our main recommendations. I agree. Um, I think we've got a map. Uh, we showed it a little bit earlier, but it, it looks at Illinois in respect to the rest of the country. Uh, and we know that uh, 82 percent of clients that we meet in Carbondale are uh, coming from out of state. Uh, mm -hmm. 60 percent of those we meet in Fairview Heights come from out of state. Uh, they're all coming to Illinois. Uh, and uh, there was a report I just saw from a pro-abortion group that says that Illinois is leading the way in increasing the number mm -hmm. of abortions. So of all the 50 states, Illinois has the most amount of change, meaning that they have over you know 20 percent growth in abortions, or now an estimated 80,000 abortions per year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what does that mean for the importance of what's happening in Illinois? Gosh, well, I think it means a lot. I mean, first and foremost, you can see Illinois is more centrally located than any of these other states like New York or California. Um, so we. Uh, we have to pay close attention to that. Not only that, but, you know, you mentioned earlier, that's funny about Grey's Anatomy and, and Southern Illinois. I, right. I did know that they, that they had said that before, but. I'll um, send you the clip. I'll yeah, I would, I would love to see it. That's funny. Um, but so, you know, that part, uh, specifically that St. Louis area, and then um, some of these other interchanges in Southern Illinois are major transportation hubs. Um, so like, for example, uh, I took a little hiatus from Illinois Right to Life. I was on the board, but I had a gap in the years that I was executive director. And it, during that gap, I was working with an organization that consults for pregnancy centers. And one of the clients that I worked with was a pregnancy center in Tennessee. And I was working with them on a contract when Roe v. Wade was overturned and all last summer. And one of the things that became our main conversation was Planned Parenthood is putting women on the train in Tennessee, in Memphis, and sending them up to Carbondale, Illinois, which is exactly right. the city that we're that we're talking about here. And that was their technique. And so Planned Parenthood, this is not by accident. I mean, you know, if they give any indication that, you know, Illinois is leading the way and it's a surprise, that is false. I mean, they have been planning for this since 2017. Um, they've been planning for this since Trump was elected president. So that's something that we have to take into consideration. And I think as as a movement, what it should do for us is tell us that we need to get ahead strategically and we need to be thinking, thinking forward um, the way that they are always thinking ahead on these things. So from that perspective, you know, like Brian, I think you guys are doing an incredible job of trying to get ahead of where the abortion providers are showing up, paying close attention to that and then saying, OK, as a, as, a, as an advocacy organization, a sidewalk advocacy organization, and then also as a PRC, how can we be out in front of these women all the time. And that's exactly what the movement and specifically what Coalition Life is trying to do is be out in front of these women all the time. And that means not just in Illinois, because we know that these clients are not just Illinois residents. They're coming from all over the United States. I mean, that that all you have to do is look at that map. Illinois is the closest other than maybe Colorado for the vast majority of states in the middle, um, in middle America, so. Right. Right. Uh, so uh, there is a little bit that happened in Danville, Illinois, I think mm -hmm. just in the last week. Uh, I'm not sure if you got the latest and greatest news. And then I want to talk about the bubble zone in Carbondale. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll talk about what happened in Danville. Maybe I'll get your comments on it and how important it is. So uh, Danville, uh, Illinois, up near Champaign, Illinois, just off to the east on the Indiana border, just past mm -hmm a abortion sanctuary city 
ordinance. And, uh, you know, right now, you know, we're talking about legislation and how important uh, laws are. Of course, our main purpose is to uh, be out in front of these abortion facilities and providing the last line of defense. But sometimes we just got to know what the landscape looks like. Mm -hmm. And so um, Danville passed a Comstock law type uh, ordinance that ties the local laws to a federal law. Mm -hmm. Now, the Comstock law uh, passed in 19, I'm sorry, in 1873 mm -hmm. and whittled, was whittled down until eventually in 1973 became irrelevant. And what it does is it, it prevents the transportation of abortion causing drugs or abortion causing paraphernalia. And uh, that was able to get past city council. So of the 100 plus uh, counties in Illinois, plus all the municipalities, there's some hope here mm -hmm. that potentially there could be a lot of uh, cities that could tie their uh, ordinances towards uh, the, the federal Comstock law. So mm -hmm. any comments about that? You know, other than, I mean, no, other than I think we should be, why are we not implementing this in every conservative town in Illinois? And I think, and I think that we should, you know, you and I have had that conversation. How can we put this out there so that these conservative city councils, I mean, Danville's not, Danville's a conservative place, but their city council makeup was almost an even split. It, there was a minute right. there that we weren't sure that this was going to pass. And so I think that that should tell us that there are plenty of towns in Southern Illinois in particular that that is not the case, that we could get something like this passed and protect them, you know, speaking of getting ahead of it, protect them from future abortion clinics trying to come in and open their doors. Um, and that's, you know, the hope, obviously, with Danville and doing this. Yeah. So we're very excited about what they were able to do in Danville. And uh, I'm glad you were involved uh, at least a little bit uh, mm -hmm. on getting that uh, over the finish line. Uh, we really appreciate you and your team uh, for helping to make that possible. Uh, one thing, one last thing I want to ask you about, which is the bubble zones in Carbondale. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, at city council, they passed a 100 foot bubble zone. Uh, and so this is a, a, a picture of Choices, one of the abortion facilities down mm -hmm. there. Uh, I know in Chicago, they have a bubble zone as well. Uh, and so uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on the First Amendment rights being trampled on mm -hmm. by uh, this these bubble zones that they want to put in place. Bubble zone laws are so interesting because, you know, obviously in certain parts of the country, they've been thrown out. And, you know, here we are in Illinois, we have two cities that have bubble zones. And um, I totally agree with you. I mean, for me, it feels like a clear violation of constitutional rights. Uh, and I think a lot of legal experts, I am not a legal expert. I think a lot of lawyers, legal experts would agree with us on that. Um, nevertheless, you know, here we are. I think the bubble zone, and, and I'm sure you guys can attest again as being a sidewalk advocacy organization, the bubble zone is a, is a hindrance to us, but that does not necessarily stop us from reaching these women. Um, and I know that there are other things happening in Carbondale right now that are allowing us to still connect with them, but it does make it significantly more difficult, partic particularly when you have this situation like, I haven't seen the front of the Carbondale um, clinic, but clinics, but I know like the, you know, the Fairview Heights Planned Parenthood comes to mind, for example, that they drive into this gated parking lot, right. which makes it really hard to connect with those women. Um, so it's a shame. And it's, it's incredibly frustrating when you see these types of laws being thrown out in other parts of the country. Um, but I mean, as always, we hope that, that there'll be a way forward, right? I mean, and I'm, you probably have the answers for some of that. <laughs> so uh, we we are working on the bubble zone, uh, and uh, there's there's a lot of work happening behind the scenes. Uh, we can't share quite uh, <laughs> what uh, we're doing just yet, mm -hmm. uh, but know that that's a that's a major issue, and it's a constitutional mm -hmm. issue as mm -hmm. well. And yeah. so uh, you know we pray, we fast, but we also understand that there are laws that we uh, are are pushing against us and not helping women who are in crisis pregnancy. Uh, so uh, thank you, Mary Kate, for all the work you're doing through Illinois Right to Life. And thank you for being on the call. Thank you. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it. Well, I wanted to um, take a look at what's happening in Missouri. And uh, thanks for everyone holding on because uh, we have a ton of information that we wanted to share with you uh, during this broadcast. Uh, and I wanted to uh, bring in a good friend of mine, Steve Rupp, to talk about what's happening in Missouri, uh, because we can't sit back. 
Uh, if, if we're in Missouri, we live in Missouri, and we think abortion's done in Missouri, we're we uh, we are mistaken. So I wanted to bring Steve in to talk about what's happening in Missouri and how we need to um, you know fight back from any attempt to bring abortion back. Well, I'm so excited to today to have a, a very special guest with us here today, Mr. Steve Rupp, president of Missouri Right to Life. Welcome. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for inviting me. I greatly appreciate it. Well, Steve, I've been following your work for uh, quite a long time, and Missouri Right to Life has always been leading the charge uh, in what's happening here in Missouri and had a lot to do with the success uh, of a lot of the political battles, not to mention a lot of the education that's happened here in Missouri. So uh, now that we're almost a year later uh, after the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision, uh, what's the landscape in Missouri? Well, the uh, the landscape is that what you had said earlier about what Missouri Right to Life has done over the years, including passing, helping to pass a trigger ban on abortions uh, a number of years ago, that if Roe versus Wade was ever overturned, that uh, 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 Missouri could become an abortion-free state. And as soon as uh, Roe was overturned, the, both the governor and the attorney general signed proclamations making um, Missouri the first abortion-free state in the union after Roe versus Wade was overturned. So you might say, wow, you, you accomplished what, you've been set, what you set out to do 50 years ago, which is true. And we celebrated for about 10 minutes. And then we said, uh-oh, now what? And the now what is starting to come to fruition, unfortunately. The, the now what is the, the abortion industry is so inflamed at what happened with Roe being overturned that they've kind of gone crazy. Well, not that they, they, they were already kind of crazy. Now they've really gone crazy. And I say that because what, what has happened is that, yes, we are, we are called an abortion-free state, but there are some exceptions. And certainly, and unfortunately, Many women are going across the river to have abortions in Illinois. They're, they're having abortions in Kansas. So we, we are called an abortion-free state, but there are still abortions being performed on Missouri women. So the education piece becomes vitally important to let them know that, that, that there are alternatives to having abortion, good alternatives to having abortions. And that comes from education. Yeah. So what what are some of the things that Missouri Right to Life and also our, our people here on the ground, the people who are listening to the uh, broadcast, whether in Missouri or in Illinois, what are the kind of educational things we should be doing? Well, the first thing we should be doing is praying unceasingly because uh, we need prayer. Those 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 moms that are confused need prayer. And we need to let them know that that abortion hurts them. It, it, certainly it, it takes the life of their child in unspeakable ways. I mean, we have half of the abortions in America now are performed using the abortion pill, which ends up with a child, a child, a child being flushed down the toilet. Hundreds of thousands of children are being flushed down the toilet every year. Can you imagine the, that we have even had this conversation 20 or 30 years ago? People would have thought we were crazy, but now we're doing it and looking the other way. So we have got to educate women on what abortion is, the sanctity of life, first of all, that, that every life is precious in the eyes of God, every life, and every life deserves protection. And then, and then what is abortion? What does abortion do to those children in, in some of the most, un, as I mentioned, some of the most unspeakable things that man has ever devised against man? And it's, it's so evil that it just makes your skin crawl. You can't even talk about it on the Internet or you get banned on the internet for just saying the truth. Here's what abortion is. So we've got to educate Americans, or, or, and, and in Missouri particularly, because they're coming at us with both barrels. When when abortion became banned, and you said it was about a year ago, it was June 24th um, last year, when abortion became banned in the United States, or in, in Missouri, because of, of Roe being overturned. And the, the abortion industry came at us, as I said, with both barrels, tons, huge amounts of outstate money coming into Missouri to change the very constitution of the state of Missouri to enshrine abortion into our state constitution. That so, is unthinkable. So Steve, I know uh, we've informed some of our, our, our base as well about this uh, these 11 referendum uh, votes. Uh, for those who just don't really understand that process and also how dangerous 
a constitutional amendment might be. Could you kind of walk us through that process? Yeah, and, and we've, we talk about education. We've been educating people across the state about what the initiative petition process is. We had a member of the Secretary of State come in and, and do presentations to us. And so the initiative petition process is that you can, with lots of money, change the constitution of the state of Missouri with just a 50% plus one vote. That's all it takes to change our constitution. And now the, the United States Constitution uh, is, is takes like 75 percent vote of the of the Congress and the Senate. So they make it hard to change the Constitution of the United States. Why shouldn't it be harder to change the Constitution of Missouri? So right. what happened is big outstate money came in here and the abortion industry came in here and they filed 11 initiative petitions that to the secretary of state, which basically they're going to try to get onto the to the ballot in November. Of, of next year during the presidential election. And if they get on the ballot, they can pass an amendment to the constitution of, of the state of Missouri to enshrine abortion into that state. So what do they have to do now is they've got to go out and collect signatures across the state of Missouri. And, and, and paying for collecting signatures becomes a pretty easy thing to do, I hate to say mm. it, but they pay canvassers to go out and you, you walk out of, of Walgreens and there's somebody out there with a, an initiative petition that they want you to sign. And they're gonna tell you lies when you're signing it, I promise you. They're not gonna say, hey, if you sign this, we can flush more little child children down the toilet. They're not right. gonna say something like that. Right. They're gonna say, this is going to save women's lives. Everybody wants to save women's lives. This right. is about freedom. This is about choice. And, and those are the kinds of things they're gonna be saying. So what we're doing now is we're, we're trying to fight the initiative petition process by try, with legislation to try to make it raise the bar on what it takes to change the constitution of the state of Missouri. They're working on that in Jefferson City. We should know something by the end of this week, what's going to happen there. But assuming that they're going to be able to move ahead and they're going to be able to gather the signatures that they need, we're asking people, don't sign the petition. Tell the people in your in your church, tell the people in your neighborhood, tell your friends, tell your family, do not sign this petition. Assuming they are able to get the, the, the required number of, of signatures in November of next year, we've got to fight this if it's on the ballot. We've got to convince people that this is not in the best interest of the state of Missouri. It's not in the best interest of women. And certainly it's not in the best interest of children who will be killed. Absolutely. And I think uh, I would highly encourage all of our supporters to get involved in this process. It's literally going to need all of us, the entire state to get involved. Uh, it's not just about those in St. Louis or Kansas or even Springfield. It's about everyone in the state uh, getting engaged and involved. Um, now, uh, maybe you could speak uh, one last thing about uh, the importance of pregnancy centers, sidewalk counseling. Uh, I know you've come out and prayed with us on the sidewalk before. Uh, so tell me about the importance of those in this larger educational uh, battle and also the fight to end abortion. Well, if, if you take a look at Brian, what this initiative petition will do, it will not only when I say enshrine abortion in, 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 in the state constitution, it will it will make um, abortion legal from the moment of conception to the moment of birth. And it will make taxpayers pay for these abortions. Mm -hmm. It will remove all protections from from women that are getting abortions. These women, literally, they, they, right now, they have to go to a doctor to have a surgical abortion. They will be able to have abortions by the next door neighbor. These right. physicians say anybody can perform abortions, and then they cannot be held liable if something happens to the mother. So we have got to educate these women. This is not in their best interest. This is horrible. When you talk about health care, this is horrible women's health care. And what you're doing, Brian, with Coalition Life and going out and praying on those sidewalks is you're meeting these women as they are entering this, these death camps. And, you are, and, and you're there with love and you're there with, with, with an opportunity for them to be able to change their minds through prayer, through your witness, through your voices. And you have saved, I don't even know the number, it's, it's a huge number. Every sure. time that you guys are out there, you're saving babies' lives and you're saving their mothers from the emotional pains of, of abortion, the physical pains of abortion, and the spiritual pains of abortion. And God bless you for what you do. That's wonderful. 
Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Steve, for being on the uh, webcast today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for all your work uh, through Missouri Right to Life and everyone who supported uh, that work for the last 50 plus years. Uh, I know we've come a long way and we're saving babies uh, by the thousands because of legislation, uh, but also by the education and the pregnancy centers as well. So thank you, Steve, for being on, on the Brian, broadcast. thank you for the invitation. God bless you. Well, we want to thank Steve and all of our speakers, Mary Kate uh, and uh, Kathleen Birchelman. I'm sure I'm missing a few that we had on. I want to thank all of them for being on the broadcast. We have one last big announcement. I wanted to bring uh, Rachel Hiley back on to the broadcast here today. And uh, we're going to talk about our general national expansion that we are having. So as we move forward and see more abortion facilities shifting and moving and going to different states, uh, we know that there's, there's a lot of needs still out there. Uh, some estimates only show that the total number of abortion facilities went down maybe 5 to 10 percent and is slowly but surely creeping its way back upwards. Uh, our last estimate was about 672 abortion facilities nationwide. And so uh, tell us about, uh, Rachel, that national expansion plan, where we're moving forward. Uh, we've heard a lot about sidewalk counseling and pregnancy services and how that's important to, to come together. So tell us uh, what that plan looks like uh, and uh, what are we doing to you know, set the groundwork to be able to build that plan? Yeah, thanks, Brian. So we talked a little bit about this last summer at our big benefit. If any of you guys were able to join us there at the St. Louis airport, uh, we talked about this idea of destination life, that we have an entire country surrounding us full of people, full of women who get pregnant, who have babies that are at risk to abortion. And we here in St. Louis have a method that works. We have discovered something that's become nationally known as the St. Louis method of sidewalk counseling. And quite frankly, it's just downright effective. We are able to reach more women by having a staff of pro professionally trained sidewalk counselors that are out there every hour the facility is open. And by being able to commit to that, um, consistent level of presence and skill and strategy, we are able to help women understand what they are about to do and help to get them to turn around and go to life affirming options. And uh, as as we looked at the passing of the, the Dobbs decision and roving overturned and Missouri not having abortions anymore, we really had to, to take a look at what our mission was and what is our goal here at Coalition Life? Are we simply a regional organization or do we want to become national? And we had to answer honestly and say that God's calling us to be a national organization. He's calling us not to stay here where abortions are happening in our neighborhood, but to go anywhere where abortion is happening. And you mentioned that before in this webcast already. It's why we went down to Carbondale because that is now the front lines of where lives are being taken at the hands of abortionists and so we do that and we're committed to continuing to do that we're not going to be satisfied and say okay well we hit 4,000 turnarounds that's good enough let's call it a day and go home we want to continue right. until every single woman who seeks an abortion in this country first meets an effective and loving advocate for life and in order to do that we have to start um going we can't sit we have to go and over the last couple of years we have been uh, beta testing we've been going to abortion facilities all over and spending you know a week two weeks three weeks and in some cases a month just traveling around and going to abortion facilities with a team of sidewalk counselors and that team just sets up shop at an abortion facility and they counsel they take our st louis method this strategy that we've developed and perfected and they try it out and they say what's the need like here what's going on in this city at this abortion facility how many women are coming in where can we go um, to make the biggest impact for life and we're, we're weighing all of those options right now as we speak, Brian, of course, you know this, but we have a team. We've got a team right now beta testing a brand new location um, that's not in Missouri or Illinois. We mean it when we say we want to take this mission out to our country, that we want to bring this outside of just our region. Of course, we're not abandoning Missouri. We're not abandoning Illinois. Our mission includes them. We have to continue growing and expanding our mission here. Uh, but simultaneously going and expanding our mission elsewhere so that women and children can be saved uh, from abortion.
Well, we know that uh, so much is happening, not just in Illinois or Missouri, although we love both of those states and we love all of our supporters here uh, in this region. Uh, but we know there's been so many people calling us, requesting, asking, please bring what you have in St. Louis, bring it to where we are and that we have. And so as these requests come in, uh, I know, Rachel, you've gotten some. I got I keep getting some people call me on the phone. Uh, can you come and test out our location? So uh, today, as of this week, uh, the one we're currently testing, we've seen the best results we've ever seen, which is nine turnarounds uh, at the current beta testing site. We don't share those sites publicly, uh, but uh, we've had some great success outside of uh, the current spots we're in. That's how we ended up in Carbondale, right? By beta testing Carbondale. That's how we ended up in Flossmoor, beta testing Flossmoor and all the other regions around that. So uh, right. it's it's our intention to uh, uh, open up at least, open up, uh, but go to at least one new uh, sidewalk counseling site. We are almost done beta testing uh, our the, the next site. And so you'll be hearing from us uh, very soon on uh, where that location will be and how you guys uh, can all help us to make that next site uh, a reality and make it a huge success. Uh, so it's all about understanding where the greatest need is and going there and setting up shop and being able to help these women in their most time of need. So uh, one of those new sites, so if there are 672 abortion facilities nationwide, uh, if we get a request from a group uh, outside of the St. Louis region, uh, that new site would cost about $150,000 annually uh, for one of those new sites, uh, not including any of the overhead costs, uh, but that's what it costs to uh, continue that, those efforts to save lives. Uh, and we know that we can see uh, uh, somewhere uh, if we're getting nine turnarounds in a in a week or just in a few days, uh, we can see two, three, four hundred turnarounds from one site. So uh, just think of all the lives that will be saved because of an investment like that. Right. So we don't want to sit back. Uh, right. We want to continue to expand. Yeah, and, and you talk about that cost, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for one site. And what what you guys have to remember too is that when we commit to a site, we are there every day. Our model is professionally trained sidewalk counselors that are there consistently, and that's what makes us so successful. We absolutely use volunteers as well, but they are trained also. Um, we train them in our methods so that what we do out there, we know is going to be effective. And, and like you mentioned, the site that we're beta testing right now, nine turnarounds. It's Thursday. Right. And in three days, right. nine turnarounds just at this one abortion facility. Um, well, that's amazing that we were able to have that effect. It also highlights the need that, uh, you know, how many how many women did our team encounter there that didn't turn around? And when when our pack team packs up and comes back home, how many women at that facility and every other facility in our country are going in every day to end the lives of their children and who are leaving scarred for the rest of their life at the, the abortion and the trauma that they just experienced inside those walls? So this is hugely important. Well, we we talked about a lot of things today. We have two, actually three big announcements, uh, two related to our pregnancy center. Uh, we're, we're growing and expanding it with leaps and bounds, uh, but now providing uh, STI testing in the next uh, month or so, also providing abortion pill reversal uh, in the next month or so. And then also uh, we will be setting up shop very soon in a new cyber counseling site, which we will be announcing uh, also in the next month or so. So these are great plans. We're, we're almost ready to, to get them off the ground. And so we're very excited uh, about uh, growing and expanding. In fact, it's, it's our fundamental this week, right? Continue to improve and do better. So uh, Rachel, we have, a, we have a huge opportunity here. Uh, so none of this happens. None of the lives that have been saved over the last year uh, could have been saved without the support of our donors and supporters. So uh, we have a great opportunity through a $279,000 all or nothing matching challenge starting today. So this is a eight day challenge uh, and, uh, and it's an all or nothing match that will end in eight days on May 19th uh, on Friday, next Friday at midnight. And so some people ask, so where do you come up with two hundred and seventy nine thousand uh, dollars? 
Uh, who, where does this come from? What, what does this really mean? And, and what it is, is it's a handful of very, very supportive donors who uh, also come out and pray with us on the sidewalk who uh, have great businesses or great investments uh, or are professionals themselves. And they understand what it means to bring professional sidewalk counseling out to the sidewalks because they do that in their own businesses. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to encourage all of us uh, and say, we're going to put up a challenge uh, during this eight day time period and all or nothing, $279,000 matching challenge and we wanted to be able to then offer that to each and every single one of you and double uh, your donation today. Of course, we love your volunteer time and everything else that you guys are providing. But today we're going to ask you to partner us as partner with us through your financial support. Uh, so just a few things, uh, you know, so we talked about the $150,000 uh, uh, site. And so each new site will cost about that. But uh, STD testing uh, will cost about $30 per STD test or STI uh, test. And also the abortion pill reversal each week that the client is taking this medication uh, costs about $40. And so she could take it up to uh, you know several weeks. Uh, up to $240 uh, for the abortion pill reversal. And that's just the, the medication itself. And so we're committed to be able to provide that. And so could you imagine for just $40 or, or you know, if it's a little bit longer time, $240, literally reversing an abortion and saving a life. Uh, we think it's worth every single penny to be able to do that. So uh, Rachel, uh, I'm, uh, any last comments you have about the ministry, where we're going, and about the matching challenge. I just want to say, you know, thank you to that group of donors that has come alongside us with this matching challenge, this gift of $279,000. Like you mentioned, these are supporters who have been there with us. They've come out to the sidewalk. They've witnessed the forces of evil that surround those abortion facilities, but they've also witnessed the work of sidewalk counselors. They've witnessed the power of prayer, the beauty of a woman turning away from death and beginning her journey towards life for her child. And that's why they're doing this. That's why they're putting their money up in such a huge way. This isn't a huge group of people. This is a small group of committed donors that really want to push everybody to come and join this mission in a meaningful way because we have so much work to do. We talked about the immense growth that our organization is is predicting here in the next few months, but also the even bigger need in our country, even just in Missouri and Illinois. We talk about expanding and beta testing in other states, and that's all well and good, but even still right here at home, the need is huge. And so for all of our listeners, all the viewers here who are watching this webcast or recording later, know that every dollar that you give towards this matching challenge, not only will it be matched, but it is going to go towards these efforts that we've just talked to you about. They are going to go to help keep sidewalk counselors on the sidewalk every single day that the abortion facility is open. It's going to allow for that emotional support, that critical options coaching that women receive when they come to our pregnancy resource center that gives them the time and space to choose life for their child. This can't be understated in its importance. The, the nearly 4,000 turnarounds that we have seen, and those are just those who come to the um, sidewalk and are turned around, not to mention the 4,000 women our pregnancy center has worked with, which includes many of those women, but it's also a whole host of other women who have found us online. These are, these are lives, real lives, real women, real children who are at risk. And we have an incredible opportunity in the next eight days to make an impact that's bigger than what it would be at any other time in the year. And Brian, this is also applied to monthly giving as well. So when we talk about a ministry that's growing in leaps and bounds, we need uh, supporters who are going to stick with us from month to month. Of course, we welcome one-time gifts. Those special gifts that you can give uh, once in a while are super important and super impactful, but also monthly giving. We talked about the cost of an STI test being about $30 per kit. What a great monthly gift. Can you provide one STI test each month where maybe your giving level is a little bit higher and you want to say $240 a month, I am going to pay to reverse an abortion every month. Provide that money that could be there to help save a baby that is in the process of being killed through abortion. What more impactful work could there be to do? And, and 
we just we have this opportunity to come in together to get this done because not every single person has the ability to go out and be on the sidewalk and the sidewalk council all day every day but we all have the ability to support those who can whether that's with prayer your volunteer hours or in this situation right now with the matching challenge with your financial gifts uh, we just we really welcome and thank every person who uh, will participate with us in this effort well, I wanted to mention one last really important for thing, specifically for those who pay taxes in Missouri. Uh, and uh, if uh, anyone has uh, followed us for any length of time, you know that we are so excited and grateful for uh, the 70 percent uh, tax credit for any donation over one hundred dollars. And so this is really important for those who live or work in Missouri who pay any taxes, whether through your business or through your personal taxes, that 70% tax credit uh, could dramatically reduce uh, your tax burden. A thousand dollar donation could be somewhere around $140 out of pocket. Uh, of course, we want you to consult with your uh, accountant and uh, your tax accountants, always talk to them. Uh, but uh, we know that there's a huge, huge opportunity uh, for you to save on your taxes and also save lives. So uh, we're excel excited about that. And so we invite you not just for a single gift, but also for an ongoing monthly gift as well to continue to support our ministry all year long. But most importantly, for us to serve those clients who are considering abortion today. Uh, Rachel, our... Uh, thank you for being on the broadcast. Thank you for your work through the Pregnancy Center. Uh, are you able to send us off in a word of prayer? I'd be happy to, Brian. And, and thank you as well to you for the leadership that you've shown in this organization. And of course, starting it all uh, some 11 years ago. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts and just ask your blessing upon the work that we do. We know that you have been here from day one, leading and guiding every step of our efforts, that you have been alongside every sidewalk counselor and client care specialist as they reach out to women in need, uh, showing your love through their feeble bodies. And God, we just ask that you would continue to do that, continue to strengthen us, embolden us, empower us for life so that we would just not shy away at the immense challenges ahead, that we would face them head on because we know that we are on your side and we know, God, that you've already won these battles and we are simply uh, here doing your work on this earth. But ultimately, at the end of the day, we know that, that life will win and we ask that you would do your will in and through us. God, we pray for this matching challenge, that you would stir the hearts of our supporters to action, that they would come out in prayer and support for those who are at risk to abortion, and that they would give sacrificially of their financial gifts as well to help support this ministry, um, that they would be able to join with us, partner with us, and partner with you in the work that we do. God, we pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our good shepherd, and our guide through all this work. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, remember to donate through coalitionlife.com. That's coalitionlife.com. Or just uh, send a check to our um, to our office on Borman Drive uh, in, uh, in St. Louis, Missouri. So God bless you guys. Uh, we'll see you next time.